Hi, Mario here. First, I want to thank my patrons for making my work possible. Welcome to my new video about ancient civilizations and the subject of the expanding Earth. This video is divided into three different levels of difficulty for the different levels of patronage. In the first level or chapter, I explain the basics of our most recent insights as to how catastrophic expansion relates to ancient civilizations, crustal deformations and the subsequent catastrophes. This is the main reason why ancient structures in the Americas are oriented the way they are, namely to ancient geographic poles. And we have succeeded in dating the major structures of these lost civilizations. Our time frames are surprisingly different from the official time frames handed down by the academia. To give you an idea, our research has demonstrated six time frames of ancient civilizations covering more than 400,000 years. The pyramids of Giza, for example, are a magnificent achievement of the most recent lost civilization. We estimate these structures to be approximately 15,000 years old. Why the civilization disappeared is a whole other topic that we have covered extensively in other videos, the ones dealing with the so-called yugas. Now let's deal with the main topic of this video. We have profound answers to the question, why did the Mayans and Aztecs have a 260 day calendar? However, did you know that the Incas used a 320 day calendar? And why did Romulus, the founder of ancient Rome, use a year of 304 days? Is it possible that the years were shorter during ancient times because the earth was perhaps smaller? and it probably rotated faster around its axis and had a faster helical orbit around the Sun. This is a stunning idea that leads to astounding insights. Yes, we think that this is the correct answer because we think that the expanding Earth is much younger than we initially thought. The expansion events of the Earth were very catastrophic to ancient civilizations that were already living on the surface of the Earth. Over the years of our research, we found many clues to how old the expanding Earth is in reality. Why are other expansionists dead wrong in their assumed time frames of tens of millions of years? Because they use wrong data. You cannot use the data of the academia who deny expansions for dating purposes. This is probably difficult to understand. We will cover this in future videos. So this data is by definition wrong. With the ancient calendar system of the Mayans, supported by our profoundly different dating methods of ancient structures, we have been able to find better answers regarding the true time frames of the expanding Earth. We have been contemplating the following possibility. Geology insists to stretch their time frame of geological changes over tens of millions of years, while archaeology compresses the time frame of human history into a mere few thousand years. There is a huge gap here and we think that this gap of reasoning hides an enormous secret and an as yet unsolved mystery. This mysterious reasoning gap between 10,000 years and about 1 million years has seemingly nothing in between except some monkey-like creatures walking in bear skins that they call Neanderthals. We think that our true history has been distorted and cloaked by the strange difference in timelines of geology and archaeology. Both disciplines sacredly believe that they are doing great scientific work at the best level they can, but we think they are deluding themselves by following a false path of reasoning. If you extend the archaeological timeline and compress the geological timeline, the magnificent truth starts to reveal itself. We think that there is a hidden timeline in the middle. The scientists who live in two different thought biospheres of discrepancy are unaware of what they have done. But is this necessary to hide our true origin from us? The majority of people who have put their whole belief system into the hands of science are indoctrinated with a false belief system. Do we have to merge these two time frames to find the ultimate truth? Yes, I think we have to. And we have found proof for this hypothesis on multiple levels. Are these two meaningless science timelines 
between brackets, deliberately presented to hide the truth about our overlords, the so-called Anunnaki, to hide our true ancestry as best as possible. Yes, I think that this is also the case. This knowledge is very important to better understand our true ancient history and to understand who and what we are, namely divine beings with divine capacities. We also think part of our divine capacities come from Earth's original inhabitants, such as the Neanderthals, a species whose DNA still runs in our blood. They are not the beast as depicted by science, no, they seem to have been the divine superior beings that originally lived on Earth. The Anunnaki, the beings from the sky, created a hybrid species from their own DNA and mixed it with that of the Neanderthals, and maybe some other species as well. I think the part that ultimately resists oppression is the DNA of the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals did not become extinct by themselves, they were eliminated by the Anunnaki to cut us off as much as possible from our original ancestry. Manipulation, especially by mind control, is the main goal. This is a serious possibility that we have been pondering and we have found more astounding clues, namely the truth behind the 260 days Mayan calendar. Historians and Wikipedians vaguely explain this calendar as something for definition purposes, to foretell lucky and unlucky days. This is a stupid explanation. Again, typical illogical explanation by historians that springs directly from their weird imagination. It is easy to say that they were sort of sacred calendar system without proposing any further explanation. Case closed. Period. We try to look at this question from several perspectives and we have found several possible answers. The rotation of the Earth and the orbit of the Earth around the Sun comply with the law of conservation of energy. By extension, if the Earth was smaller in diameter, it had less gravity and spun faster around its axis. It also means that the Earth orbited faster around the Sun. The fact that not one, but all ancient civilizations used shorter calendars should ring all bells of logic, because it shows a pattern, a consistent pattern of years getting longer when ancient civilizations get younger. This observation supports our hypothesis in such a way that the probability that this is factual exceeds 99.5%. Was Romulus' calendar of 304 days still a heritage of ancient knowledge which he ignorantly reused, or is it a fact today's Earth rotated slower in his days? Maybe we don't know the answer to this question, to this specific question. We have proven with our analytical method that most of the megalithic ancient monuments were constructed hundreds of thousands of years ago. What separates us from our very ancient ancestors is not only an ocean of time, but also a series of massive, long-lasting cataclysms. Our collective ancient memories are buried in the mist of time. Many of the megalithic leftovers from ancient civilizations hint at a high level of sophistication. These cultures thrived on our planet before massive, ravaging cataclysms threw them back into one of the many Stone Ages. Our deeper explanations of these questions are shared on a higher level of patronage, mainly because of the difficulty of the matter and the time it takes to work on the models. I hope you enjoyed this video so far and if you have questions please let me know. Thank you for watching.